Okay, now that we've got the audio synced, I think we're ready to start. All right, I get it. I'm in a different position again. I hate being in the same place. So let me live, okay? Welcome back, you guys. So for the last few weeks, I've been on the lookout for any articles concerning the GPD Win 4, what many assume to be GPD's next big release. So when I saw a few articles pop up a few days ago, I decided I wanted to discuss it with you guys in a video on my channel. It's what I'm doing right now. Please subscribe. All right, so a little heads up, GPD just posted on their Twitter and they basically confirmed like everything that I stated in this video because of the leaked specs, but it's all just now confirmed. It, like the design and everything is confirmed. We still don't have a price, uh, but we'll probably get that soon. So continue with the video. So the GPD Win 4 is a follow-up to last year's GPD Win 3, and we'll get to the design a little bit later, but I just wanted to say that, my god, this design looks much more comfortable and aesthetically pleasing compared to last year's design. So let's go over the leaked tech specs for this thing before diving into any other details. Credit to Kerry Golem on Twitter, or the Fox on YouTube for this information. According to him, the GPD Win 4 will have a six inch 1080p display and it'll be using an AMD 6800U with either 16 or 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. I assume you'll be able to choose between the two when you're ordering the device because that's how this usually works. It'll have one or two terabytes of NVMe storage, an Intel AX210 allowing for Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. It has USB 4 allowing up to 40 gigabytes of data transfer per second, a USB-C port, a USB-A port, and a 45 watt hour battery allowing for a long amount of playtime depending on the game you're playing. I understand that that was a lot of information, so let's break it down so it's easier for you to understand. The AMD 6800U is a processor that a lot of companies have been using in their devices this year, and I'm sure it'll be an upgrade over the Intel Tiger Lake processor that was in the GPD Win 3 from last year. It's the same processor that will and has been in all of the more powerful devices released by companies this year. The AOK Zoe A1 had it, the Ion Neo 2, and the Ion Loki Max will both have it as well. It's a very powerful processor that has been proven to be able to do a lot of high end gaming and emulation, so there's no worry there. <coughs> Options for 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM are common among devices like these. Ein is only letting people choose 16 gigabytes when they order the Loki Max, but most companies like Ioneo will let you choose 16 or 32 gigabytes depending on which one you want. I wish Ein would just give us the option of 32 gigabytes, but they do say that the RAM and storage are both user upgradable. So, I mean, what if you really want to do that, you can, but I wish they'd just let us choose to have 32 gigabytes. One or two terabytes of storage is a lot of storage. Depending on which one you choose, it'll be two or four times the amount the Ein Loki will have, but it's going to be the same amount that most Ein Neo models will have. I wonder how many Shrek PNGs can fit into a terabyte. One terabyte can fit 8,620,689 copies of this PNG of Shrek. That is a lot. That should be more than enough storage for any amount of games that you'd want to play, which is great since other companies that make more gaming PC oriented handhelds only give options up to 512 gigabytes like Ein and uh, Valve with the Steam Deck. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip are normal for devices like these. It'll now just be faster considering it allows for Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. The extra USB port will be helpful if you'd want to plug in like an external keyboard or controller considering I don't think navigating Windows on a device like this will be very plausible or comfortable. Coming from experience with the Ein uh, Odin, putting Windows on there was kind of a hassle and getting around the Windows 11 system OS was a bit of a pain with only a touch screen. Okay, here we go again. I'm gonna be extra careful this time because somehow my audio recorded weird, like it sped it up at the end. So I have to refilm like half the video. Let me figure out where I left off. I'm not very good with watt hours. I'm not very good with watt hours, but from what I can find, 45 watt hours should give you a good few hours depending on the game you're playing. Like obviously a more graphically intense game like Cyberpunk is going to drain your battery faster than something like Celeste. 
just due to the graphical nature of those games. The Ein Loki Max is a 46.2 watt hour battery, so I assume that these two devices will have similar, if not like basically the same battery life. In terms of emulation, I'm expecting a lot out of this thing just because the AOK -OK Zoe A1 launched earlier this year with the same AMD 6800U processor, and that thing could emulate a lot of stuff. So I'm expecting a lot of high-end gaming, PC gaming, and emulation from this thing. So maybe like Switch and Wii U, and like every Nintendo console before it, should run really well. I can't say the same about like Xbox and PlayStation because weirdly enough, PlayStation and Xbox, like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, like they don't have emulators, working emulators, compared to how the Switch literally had one like day one. That was weird. So I can't make promises about that, but you can do Game Pass and game streaming for PlayStation and Xbox. If I can get my hands on this device, I certainly will be testing it out and pushing it to its limits, but I don't know if I'll be able to. And if, I aren't, if I'm not, then you're just gonna have to look at someone like ATA Prime or Retro Game Corps when they get theirs in. And I think it's about time we talk about the design. Now, if you read the title, which I'm sure all of you did, you already know what I'm gonna compare this to. <laughs> it. You can't deny that this thing looks like a giant PSP. The joystick on the left is now at the top with the D-pad being on the bottom and the right side now has a right joystick down near the bottom under the face buttons. But aside from that and like a few other differences, it looks just like a giant PSP. Like you truly cannot deny that it looks like a giant PSP. I'm not knocking it for this because honestly, I feel like this is a much better design than what they've gone with in the past. I. It's probably the best design they come up, they've come up with, like they've copied kind of, I guess. And I feel like with the ergonomic grips and the rounded edges, this thing is going to be much more comfortable to use than basically any of their GPD Win models in the past. The Win, I think it's just for Windows, like people who want a Windows gaming portable thing. So I'm glad they've gone with something like this for the device. And if anything, it just makes the device look more appealing. It looks more amazing. I am a little worried, I just get worried every time I see a device that doesn't have the Steam Deck style of D-pad where it's like on the left top like it is on the Steam Deck, just because I don't know how comfortable it's going to be able to be to use on the device. Like on the Ein Odin, it's comfortable to use, but I mean, could be more comfortable. So I don't know about this device, but you don't have to worry about that, that's just me being paranoid. I've somehow not mentioned this up until now, but there is a keyboard under this thing. You have to slide up the screen to get to it. Much like last year's GPD Win 3 model, this, the keyboard is under the screen. It's like a slide up thing that's a little cool. I think it's a little cool but I can't imagine it's that comfortable to use. It looks more comfortable than the one on the Win 3, but again, I can't just, I, I just can't see it being all too comfortable or just like plausible to use. But I mean, I hope I'm proven wrong. I mean, I'd hope, I hope a, a company is able to make a device as a keyboard under the screen that is comfortable to use in Windows. Like the Ioneo slide, I think it is, is gonna have one as well. So I hope they do something cool with that and make it actually comfortable to use can't for, say for certain though hope gpd proves me wrong and makes an actual good one the lead design looks nice i vastly prefer this over the one on the win 3 just because the win 3 kind of looked like a wii u gamepad with the way the analog sticks and controller buttons were set up but it didn't have the grips and it was very thin so it was it looked very uncomfortable to use the face buttons that were on the bottom of the right side so it all just looked very unpleasant compared to this one, which actually looks really nice, in my opinion. I'm sure the weight and size will weigh this down a little bit. See what I did there? Weight? Okay. But I hope its weight is balanced in a way that makes it comfortable to use for long play sessions, because there have been a lot of reviewers who have said stuff about the Steam Deck where it's big, and you can tell it's big, but it's not as heavy as it looks, which is what I hope they achieve with this. Because if they can make it feel lighter than like it looks, then I feel like it'll be more comfortable to use for long play sessions. The D-pad is very reminiscent of a PSP D-pad in the best ways. It's on the bottom left now, and I've spoken about my issues with that. It's not an issue, I just was paranoid for some reason. And it looks comfortable to use. I hope they don't let me down with the D-pad, because I know some companies have been missing the ballpark with some of these D-pads. But I trust that it'll be good. Please don't let me down, GPD. So overall, this device looks sick. I vastly prefer this design over the design of the Win 3. That thing was ugly. I hate to sound like cynical or rude or whatever, but that thing was ugly. I don't like it. 
It looks more comfortable to use. It has a 1080p 6 inch screen compared to the 5.5 inch 720p screen that was in the Win 3 last year. And the rounded edges and ergonomic grips on the back that are supposedly going to be there. It just looks like it's going to be a better experience for the user compared to what the Win 3 was last year. I'm honestly not sure what they were going with then. Again, my biggest issue with the Win 3 last year was the design. It was ugly. I hated it. The thinness, the like the tightness of the device was a major turnoff from even considering buying it. And I just don't see how that made it past like any type of like QA testing. It's insane. The keyboard on that thing looked uncomfortable to use, which I mean, none of these devices that have slide up screens and keyboards underneath look very comfortable to use, but at the same time, come on GPD, you can make a good one, right? Hopefully. That design was ugly and I'm glad they got rid of it. The Win 4 design looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing and just like more comfortable to use for long play sessions overall. And I'm glad they switched to that over what they did with the Win 3. And I prefer the look over most Windows handhelds that have been released or are releasing. Haven't seen much of the iNeo 2, but I think that looks pretty sick. And I prefer it over the AOK Zoe A1, because that thing looks thick. And not the Loki though. The Loki has the Odin design. I really like the Odin design. I'm biased, but I do like the, the Odin design the best. So if I doesn't screw that up with the Loki, I think they're golden. I really hope the keyboard's nice. And I don't think we've heard anything about pricing yet, just because I think GPD's trying to wiggle this down as much as they can in terms of pricing. But that's really all I have to say about this device. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me in the comments, are you thinking about this device? If it if it's at a good price point where it can compete with the low key, would you consider buying it? If not, or if so, tell me in the comments. If there's another if there's another device you want to see me talk about, tell me and I pro I'll probably cover it. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.